Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comps, and today is going to be a really short video on standardizing DC connectors. Most of our electronic equipment that we use in the field is going to be powered by a battery pack or our vehicle or whatever is going to run on 12 or 13.8 volts DC. And these connectors that I've standardized with are the uh, Anderson connectors, which are also known as PowerWorks connectors, Glarks connectors, and in the RC car days they were called light speed connectors. And these are relatively inexpensive connectors. They can handle up to 30 amps of current. And what you can do is, is you can assemble these things and customize them to your heart's desire. It's important because you can take these shells, and that's the two parts of the connector, is you have this tongue right here, which actually inserts into this shell, and then the corresponding tongue mates like so, and makes an electrical connection that actually can withstand quite a few connect and disconnect cycles before it loosens itself up. The shells for these connectors have a small metal spring-loaded component in there, so when you insert your connector into here, what happens is, is this portion of the tongue right here gets caught on that spring and allows it to not come apart. And the plastic shells themselves have these lands and grooves in them that allow them to fit together. And you can actually stack these things. You can put them in all kinds of different crazy combinations. But it's important to remember that when you're putting these together that you make sure you polarize them all the same so all of your equipment will interoperate. For example, we have this Class A VHF DSC radio here, and we have the power connector on here, which is a setup is a power pole. Let's say we wanted to power this off a 12 volt cigarette lighter. We already have a connector king cable built right here, but we can just go ahead and simply plug it in. And we have this battery pack right here. can plug it directly in the battery pack just like that. Or let's say that we needed to hook it to a battery that we didn't have a connector on. Right here we have these alligator clips right here that we can plug right in as well. So you can see that you've got various options you can use as you build these different adapters to keep into your kit. Oftentimes we'll run into these coaxial power plugs here and they used to be able to get these small kits that would allow you to change different sizes and change the polarity of the tip and ring on the connector based upon where the tip indication was indexed. So as I plug this one in here you can see that my tip is going to be polarized negative. Now what I've done is is I've went ahead and put a power pole on the other end of this here so if I had a piece of equipment or several pieces of equipment that used a 12 volt coaxial power plug I can go ahead and custom tailor this particular cable to fill those roles for all those pieces of equipment and you can see some of my adapters here here I have the larger current adapter here this is a 50 amp Anderson connector and you have the 30 amp on this end here to adapt those together this is for an ICOM HF radio and this particular one is for a Motorola and you've seen the cigarette lighter one here and I have this one here which is a lighter socket that can go into a battery and I have this one here which is a multiple lighter outlet now this particular one here I've got set up with a simple fuse holder in it but I use this as a test equipment more than anything else whereas what I will do is plug this in between a source of power and the device itself and as you can see here, what I've done is, is just installed this multimeter here as a shunt. And I can go ahead and test current draw on receive and transmit up to the limitations of the meter. And like this hooks to my power supply on my bench here. And if I want to connect it to work on this particular radio here, all I do is plug this in right here. And I can plug this in the back of the radio unless I have the radio pre-wired for this connection which makes it even simpler like in the case of the uh, marine radio. And for powering accessories in your vehicle it's very easy just to leave a pigtail like this hooked to a fused power source whether that's switched or constant hot and you can go ahead and make connections to whatever equipment you desire on the fly. Now there is some concern with the connectors perhaps pulling apart because there is some friction involved with the connection 
Well, if you want to take a couple of wire ties and rig these up right here, you can see how these just slide through here as such. And make a very secure connection that's not going to come apart. Yet you're able to separate this connection just by cutting the wire tie, taking it apart. We're going to go ahead and attach these to some wire and we're going to use simple tools and these are just a gardener and bender pair of uh, crimpers. Uh, these things are inexpensive. You can get these at Home Depot or a hardware store, so uh, they're nothing that's esoteric or a specialized tool by any stretch of the imagination. Now, they do make a ratcheting crimper for these specific connectors, which do a really good job. However, it's not a multifunctional tool. It's only going to fill this role right here, whereas these right here are multifunctional, and you may be limited in how many tools you can carry with you in your toolkit. So you want to make sure that the uh, tools you do choose are good for multiple purposes. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.